Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to The Outcast. I am your host, Wolf, this time, and I am joined by... HC, who agrees to not do the opening because it's Ruby episode time, so... Spoilers! They didn't know yet. They definitely couldn't they have saw looked the at thumbnail the thumbnail. And the title. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we are covering Ruby, Justice League, and... Justice... Yeah, look at that. We are covering Justice League x Ruby, Superheroes and Huntsmen Part 2. It came out. We're a little late, but it finally came out, and we're finishing up on this one. You say finally, but I I did re-listen to the episode we did about part one to remember what we even talked about, and it it wasn't even a year ago. No, no, it wasn't one. that long. It was a couple months, and then part two yeah. came out like I want to say two, three months afterwards. Yeah, which was surprising, but so. Oh considering was it worth the wait hc jumping straight into it i mean can i say something was worth the wait if i wasn't necessarily clamoring for it to begin with yes and no <laughs> well for the record let's just uh, start with what did we think of the first one i personally think the first one had a lot of potential but i felt like it was a bit more of a Ruby thing than a Justice League thing. It didn't feel like a it didn't feel like a crossover in the like the the Justice League side got the short end of the stick, I feel. And I would agree. I and like in general it wasn't anything awful, but I still didn't really recommend it. It didn't feel it felt like it's, I'm sad to say this as someone who wrote us, but it felt like one of those bad fanfics for me. If you so, if you were a Ruby fan, I think you got, you know, you got something that was pretty decent. If you're a DC fan, you probably didn't get much from part one for your taste, really, I would say. You know, because the DC characters didn't do a ton. There's some good stuff there with, like, Jessica and John for Green Lantern. And, I mean, the Ruby fandom has definitely adopted her, her I think, because, like, uh, what's it called? I think it's Nightlight. It and is the ship other, name for Jean and Jessica for part time, one. At the same time, even as someone who is like, has a very, would only consider himself a casual fan of Batman, and even then I have some problems with uh, Mr. Wayne. I, what the fuck was that Batman? What was this character? Because Batman it wasn't. I, Whoever's driving outside agrees with me, I assume. <laughs> I mean, it was definitely one of those things of, I think they were trying to play them up more as teenagers, right? Because that's what they were in part one for the Justice League Still, anyways. But there's definitely some stuff that, that didn't come across well. But, you know, so part one, kind of meh. Nothing, like, terrible. You're not going to, like, you know, it's not a super waste of time for whether you're a DC fan or a Ruby fan. But if you're a Ruby fan, you're getting more. Definitely, I said, but it's I still. Think I, said it, um, I think I said uh, previously too that like if you're a Ruby fan, there's a good chance you're gonna get more out of it. DC fans, I I think this is not one of your. Be it's not one of the best uh, incarnations. Let's go with that. Which is fair, right? Like it's definitely meh, you know. But part now two, we have part two, does it make it better? You want to say it first? Your silence speaks volumes. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Then I'll just go for it. I don't think this one was necessarily better. It's not worse by any means, but like it wasn't all that better. And honestly, it it just made me question a lot of things. I but thought you would have I... loved this one. We got Troy Baker as Batman. Honestly, don't get me wrong. Troy, Troy Baker is awesome. Troy mm -hmm. Baker is an awesome Batman too, but it doesn't save the movie. And if anything, it actually, actually, it actually got it made me ask more questions that shouldn't have been there. I mean, uh, Batman barely gets any lines. Let's be honest. Uh, yeah, there's that too. But for the record, okay. So I said I don't really think. I'm sorry to be the downer. I don't think it's that great too. But uh, what did you think? It is. You know, looking at it just by itself, it's another meh thing. Looking at them both together, 
I think they're elevated a little bit more, but it's going from meh to yeah, that was that was okay, right? From meh I'll to okay. I'll be honest with you, even if I'm looking at it, I just they're all okay. You know what? Not non spoilers yet. We're not gonna talk about spoilers for mm-hmm. now, but uh, just a general thing. You remember how I said that the first part felt more like it was instead, you know, that it felt more like Ruby with the Justice League characters, yeah. But uh, instead of a crossover, I and here I it still that, feels like yeah, it's that trend more continues. Ruby. Yeah, it's still more Ruby than Justice League, and I figured this was gonna be the opposite because this time I'm not really spoiling anything by saying we are in the Justice League world, not the Ruby world. So I expected maybe do something that's a bit more... I, I don't mind how the characters look in the Ruby style. I think they look fine. I just think you could give a bit more distinction to it because it's done by the Warner Brothers animation team and they know their stuff. So I don't think this was done by the Warner Bros. animation. Well, it was done in part. I, uh, Rooster Teeth also did some of the animation for this as well. So I don't yeah, know who think, did you know, more of the they work probably do the anim- but that's the thing, though, that they probably... I know that they did the animation for, like, the Ruby stuff, you know, the characters, the models, and everything. But if you are... If now you're going to bring the Ruby characters to the Justice League universe, why not actually make it look like some of the DC animated stuff? Because that Maybe requires I'm... a budget, and <laughs> Ruby's not worth that. <laughs> I, 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 you know something, then, you know, it kind of sucks that they would go for through the process of actually giving this a movie, and, a real, and you know... As a part two, right? Mm -hmm. This is like the second one. So why not? The first one obviously sold. And the comic, I assume, sold well enough so that they will make this adaptation. Honestly, I I don't remember the comic super well. But my take, I felt like the from what I do remember, it's been a while since I've read all the comic. And I don't remember if I've read all of it or not, I'll be honest. But I do own it. And for my take, I feel like the comic had a better story. Like, it just felt better. Hmm. Maybe that's because it was in comic it. form. I, I know you haven't. But from my, again, it, it's been a while. And, you know, I, it's vague in parts. I don't remember all of it. But I want to say I felt like the comic was better. I don't know how much that's saying. Like, you know, I don't know, you know, is that a low bar to overcome or, you know? Like, I can't, re- again, I can't really say because I haven't read the comic. I mm. I bought it for a friend as a gift, but then again, I haven't really read anything from it. Uh, but I assume it, it must have tickled some people's fancy because, again, we wouldn't get the movie for nothing. This... Is this is something that obviously has an audience, and I can see why. I love crossovers. I enjoy crossovers. So it is cool that we can use that. Uh, you know, Warner Brothers can use the IPs like that. But I also feel it's like okay, we have Ruby. This is going strong. We have the Justice League character. Everyone knows them. Let's just do whatever and not really think the implications. Because okay, you know what first movie it was the justice league characters in the ruby world fine makes sense that it'll be more ruby and now in part two the ruby characters are in the justice league universe there's going to so may there's gonna be more just <laughs> no it's still mostly ruby it's the ruby animation the ruby characters are getting also a bit more time i assume they they get a bit well, more time yeah they do in a way I mean, and... they do, because, like, you have a scene where, slight spoilers, where, I'm not going to say too much on it, because I'm going to say more oh. on it later, but you have a scene where Yang has a discussion with Flash, and it's it's very much mm-hmm. like Yang, like, you know, being the, like, hey, I've lived through your experience before, and I'm passing down some wisdom, even though she's younger than he is, right? But mm-hmm. the idea is, is, it, it, I feel like this was more so, right, it's the Justice League. You know these characters. We don't need to do as much with them. They don't need to learn anything, although they do have Flash learn a thing, so I guess this doesn't work. I don't necessarily but... need them to learn a thing, but I, but if anything, I kind of like the, that in a way, 
they take some sort of uh, mental roles to the Ruby team, which makes sense. They are adults, and the Ruby well, team. Superman are did. Yeah, you know, I, I, I guess. I don't. I guess Batman under... did. So why is yeah, question mark? To, to an extent, but, mostly just but... sat there silent. <laughs> yeah. Well, to be honest, that's bad. That's how I mean, tells most of the people. I guess but, fair. <laughs> uh, but uh, but my thing is my thing with this is though that after the first one, you know, because in the first one we didn't get the Justice League in their own universe for even one bit. They just end up in Remnant. Here, the Ruby characters get some time to themselves and also do let me know now. Is this supposed to be canon to the Ruby no, it show? No, it is not canon to the Ruby show. You can uh, slot if you want to slot it in. It, they definitely give you like, hey, this is kind of like after volume eight. You can probably slot it in after volume nine if you want because it's think open ended much enough. Choice considering well, no, this was done before volume nine. Remember this. This was done like they were animating and writing for this and directing it around the, before volume nine slash a little bit during volume nine but mostly before volume nine but that's why volume nine again, took so long to make because this but came at the first. same time there are point, there are stuff we're not gonna say it right away but there are two things here which yeah you can kind of write off if you don't want to make it canon but if it's supposed to be like in the same continuity then it kind of has to happen after volume nine. Oh no it absolutely no. has to but i'm just letting you know like it was this was written before they knew a lot of what they were going to do with Volume 9. This was, like, mm. done before then. Yeah, because all I'm going to say is that considering where Team Ruby is starting the movie and a little background detail that at the very end, we won't, gonna, we won't tell you the spoilers yet, but it's there are two very quick details that show if this is supposed to be in the Ruby canon, this is after Volume 9. But As to... Answer your question officially, no, it is not canon at all. If you want it to be, it can be. Have fun. I, I think I appreciate it that it's not because that way I don't need to remember this. But also oh. because because I feel like it kind of disconnects. Because if uh, because Volume 1 felt a bit more like the, fir the first three seasons. Like it's taking place somewhere around that time. And this one felt like, oh, well, after Volume 9 now. All right, sure. I guess. True, that... part one is definitely set in a little bit of a weird spot, but, well, part one is, you know, during, like, volume eight-ish, maybe, after that as well, because, like, it was all simulation, that's why they looked like their younger selves, so it's technically not set during volumes one through three. Yeah. That's why you have that. Uh, if you if the... you remember, that's why you have that scene at the end of part one where they wake, where Team Ruby wakes up, and they're like, you know, and they do have in a VR too, simulation yeah. thing. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Well, but I, I, I still so say, if, like, but if it's not canon, then you know what? It doesn't really matter. To me, again, I'm biased. I'm absolutely a fan of Ruby, and there are stuff in both of these, and we're going to talk more about some of the things in part two. But part one, yeah. again, it had some moments where it's like, this is really. Good. I just wish there was more of this, like Jean and uh, Jessica, right? For Green Lantern, some of the talks Wait. they had in Part One were really good, but it's it's like you don't get enough of that, and, and it, it it continues here. I mentioned it earlier. Anything, Yang and Flash, Jean in, and you know because Jean is not in this movie. No, he got cut. Yep. And w one thing that kind of that honestly cracked me up that they have Black Canary in this and she's voiced by Jamie Chung. Yep. Now, and for the record, I love Jamie Chung. She's a great actress. Yes, she is really good. But <clears throat> one, she has nothing to do in this movie. Like, it's so weird because they also, if you look at the credits, they highlight her. Like, she's a big thing. I don't think she even has like 10 lines in the thing. And also, for such a celebrity, this is not the character I would cast her as. You wouldn't cast Jamie Chung as Black Canary? No, like um, it's not. It's not just a matter of that you know the character's not Asian or something. It's just no, no, something fair. about. Uh, it's not that. Just just something about the voice doesn't seem like she see. She needs to be somewhat. She, she needs to be someone she, younger, right? Like Black Canary not, feels older. For, like, not, necessarily, not necessarily younger or older, just something about 
it's not the voice that I would I will admit consider for this character. It, I, I, I kind of agree. It, it, it didn't... There's something about it that felt off, I will admit, right? It just feels like... It just... I don't know. It feels weird for Black Canary of all people, right? Yeah, I like get it's, it. Um, it's and it weird... might be... Oh, who was the actress who played Black Canary in, like, uh, Young Justice, I believe she appears in? I don't know. I don't remember the name on top of my head. But... That one felt like it really fit. Maybe it's just that, right? It's like, you know, because mm. I don't... I th because I I'm not sure if it's the same actress, but like I there were black and I that I I kind of have in mind the one who voiced her in Injustice, the second one. Mm. Yeah, fair. So yeah, it, it, it's definitely one of those things of like I don't know. It, it feels off. I I agree with you. It it and, I heard the voice know, and I was like, huh, it just feels weird. She, I don't know why. I do agree with also, you. Because they also, like, they highlighted her. And again, I like Jamie Chung as an actress. She's a great actress. But it, it felt so weird that they brought her here for a character that it's not really her, that she didn't really fit and she barely says anything. Like, again, was she just in the studio? Was she doing something in the studio? And To be uh, clear, like, hey. right, as HC said, nothing wrong with her. She does fine here. It just, as HC said, it feels off something about it just it doesn't work and not sure what that something is but yeah I, I agree with you it something about it just feels off and it doesn't work i don't think it's her yeah. i think she does fine but no like and uh, i just uh, again i'll go out and say that i think she's a great actor even in even you know dragon ball evolution the shittiest movie ever made probably she's doing a good job in that okay she's do she tries her best Fair. so it's not against her Okay, you agree. Good. Moving on. Mm -hmm, so, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, that and you know, if we are on the topic of voice actors, I not that there is anything wrong with the cast they got, but I found it weird that they have the, that the Justice League characters have different voices in this. I know that in the original, that in part one, they were teens, so that's probably the reason. But I also found it confusing that, like you said, Troy Baker reprises Batman. He's been Batman before in some video games and in the TMNT crossover movie. So he's doing he's doing I it mean, again, and he's a great and he's a great Batman. But then every every other Justice League member is voiced by an actor that, to my knowledge, never voiced them before. I mean, you also and, you, you have some pretty big names. Like you have Travis Willingham as Superman. Yeah, I was about to say Laura Superman Bailey ha as Wonder Woman. Yeah, I was about to say Superman having Knuckles' voice is so off for me, but <laughs> it worked. I it worked. It worked. I didn't so. notice it too much. Like he was fine as Superman, and I think well, I think Laura. That's the thing. I, I noticed it a few times know... where it felt like, huh, that's odd. I think I know that voice, right? There's a few times, and then I realized, oh, okay, that's Travis. All right. By the way, fun fact: uh, Travis uh, Travis Willingham and Laura Bailey are also like kind of the voices that Disney would think get to voice Thor and Black Widow, respectively. A lot. And, Travis has played Thor a lot. A yeah, lot. and uh, and fun fact: they are married in yes, real life. They are so. Get, so any imp so any implications you want about Thor dating Black Widow or Superman dating Wonder Woman, which is canon in some interpretations, there you go. I mean, it, it's, you know, another little fun thing, right? Like, this was before they were married, but if you don't know, Travis plays Roy Mustang in, like, Fullmetal Alchemist Brotherhood, right? And mm -hmm. Laura plays Lust in Fullmetal Alchemist Brotherhood. Oh, well, so now this I'm was before. Not... I'm pretty sure this was before they were married, but he does get to technically kill his wife in a show. <laughs> oh, okay, man. How nice. <laughs> um, but, but yeah, yeah. so like, but you get these two actors who, <clears throat> as far as I'm aware, never never play these characters, and the same, and suddenly you have Troy Beck Baker reprising Batman, which I know he's probably not one of the most well known to some people, but he's done it and he's doing it. And, you know, rest in peace, Kevin Conroy, but he's doing a decent enough Kevin Conroy-like voice, so... Troy Baker is the one what? that's, like, it didn't stand out to me. Like, it felt like, all right, you know, that's Batman. I, I just kind of glossed over it, right? Because it just To be honest, he also so doesn't well. really have a... He doesn't really he, have anything else to do. He doesn't have a ton of lines, admittedly, but still, like, my point is, is that I think he 
did the best at staying, I guess you'd say, incognito that I wouldn't have known that was him until I looked it up, right? Yeah. Travis, well, Laura, I, I didn't quite catch I, either. I think she did really well as Wonder Woman and kind mm -hmm. of keeping with well, the Laura Wonder Bailey Woman just, voice. Like, the the range Laura Bailey has is true. insane. True. So. She, yeah, true. She is too good. <laughs> mm -hmm. Travis, I noticed a little bit, it's like, Mm, something's yeah, off here. Again, I, I you know, like because I know that, I've but... seen it, when you listen to not, when you listen to not, a lot as a tall and knuckles, you kind of you start figuring out that it's him. Mm -hmm. But it, it's not a bad. Story. No, no, no. I like mean, no one here does that. Bad. I have Let's that. be clear. Yeah. Let's say I think when we did TMNT twenty twelve, you kind of had this thing that like, yeah, you know, you know that Greg Sipes is probably a good actor, but you just hear Beast Boy whenever he speaks. Sometimes it can be that way, yeah. Mm -hmm. Because that, that's, so, the, that's the voice you get to know it as, and then once you hear it, you can't unhear it, right? Yeah, it's one and of also things. like, uh, and you know, there's a, like Patrick Wildborn, when you just, whenever he talks, it's just him. You can't get another person to do that voice. It's him. True, yeah. So, but that's enough about voice. I, I think voice, I, it, but it was weird for me that it's not the same cast from the first one. And then suddenly we get new cast. Well, somewhat. I think the idea was, is like, oh, this is them as teenagers. So we don't want to use the same voice when they're adults, right? Oop, hit the mic. We don't want to use the same voice when they're adults, right? So that's why they got new ones, which I, I you know, makes some know. sense. Because like, hey, we want them to sound younger. And now I want them to sound older. Yeah, but then the, <clears throat> but then when the Ruby cast, if, uh, comes into the Justice League world and well, they do get new designs which uh, look cool, all things considered. I feel like them having the exact same voices is suddenly kind of it's not it's a nitpick on my end, but it's also like, huh? Why? Why the why the lack of continue? Why the lack of continuity? It's not something that bothers me as much, personally. I'll admit. Yeah, no, I get this is me nitpicking for the record. I'm just, uh, it's just something that I'm like, wait a minute, because again, this is what I mean. It feels more like Ruby with the Justice League rather than a crossover to me. I mean, fair. It feels it does. Like... Mm -hmm. But regardless, I guess anything else to say, or can we just jump into spoilers? No, I think we can jump into spoilers. Like again, like said it before, if you're a Ruby fan. I think you're eating decently well. It's still going to be, it's still kind of meh, but there's some good, there's enough like good moments here of things that you're eating pretty well. If you're a DC fan only coming into this, you're probably going, walking away from this a little disappointed. Probably I'll a little say, bit more than disappointed. As someone who is a casual Ruby fan and a casual DC fan, I didn't, I, there are some cool action scenes which are world viewing, and it, for all intents and purposes, it's not a long movie at all. It's like not even an hour and a half, so it won't it won't take too much out of your time if you want to give it a shot. But I'll say you're not missing anything by skipping it. Nah, probably just look up some of the fight scenes on YouTube, and you'll be good enough. Like, there's nothing here that's like really worth it, worth it, right? You have to see this scene. Nah, there's nothing like that. It's just. Hey, you want to waste 75 minutes in total? Have some fun. If not, fair. Go watch something that you enjoy more. I get it. With that being said, we are going to jump into spoilers in 3, 2, 1. Still here? Okay. So, I just have to say, this you could call it a nitpick. I call it, again, this is a small thing that adds up. What was the point of that shot of seeing Joker and Harley watching the entire thing from the <laughs> I thought that was so stupid, but it also kind of so funny. I get it. <laughs> it was so fucking stupid because, like, you have the Justice League and, you know, they do this thing that they kind of... They also tease other villains, like, you know, they're just kind of there. Mostly you Flash's like, villains, right? With it, Weather like, Wizard. Killer Croc, is there, Killer Croc is there at the beginning, and then we never see him again. Then there's. Well, you see him. Of... You see him like one more time at the final battle where oh, like really? they help. Yeah, I don't know if you noticed him. Like him, oh, Weather Wizard, and Mirror that. Master <laughs> help at the very end, like when this mm -hmm. final battle starts. And then they have that one scene where Killer Croc like goes up and runs up and grabs Kilgore and Weather Wizard. Weather Wizard. God, what a name. Mirror Master help out a little bit, and then they're gone. After that, it's just Justice League and Ruby versus uh, 
you know, spoilers, yeah. Arthur Watson Kilgore. <laughs> Yeah, that's uh, but so yeah, but suddenly like you just there's just this cut to Joker and Holly watching the thing from afar and it's like, what does this have to do with anything? Like why T because for the record, I'm kind of glad that there's a DC thing which doesn't rely on the Joker because the Joker is overdone. But yet you still got him in the show. Anyway. But, but no, <laughs> but like movie. but like but if you're gonna put him there and also again you have Troy Baker in the studio, he's doing an he. To this day, he's the only person who played both Batman and the Joker, and he's doing great as both. So you have him here. Why just put Joker there and not li- and like? Did you just have a model ready? I think it's one of those things of like, hey, Joker and Harley enjoying watching the world burn. That's a them thing, right? You know, drinking I wine guess, again. But it's like it's one of those references that's like. Why is it even here? There's no point to it. No, I, I get you. It's just one of those like woo reference. You know, you're supposed to. Go, oh, oh like, it's that person. Like, oh. Let's and say, move yeah, on. Yeah, let's say if like if they were like watching in the background of like the climax or something, like there would be like a bunch of Easter eggs in an audience or something. All right, but this is it's it literally cuts to them on a roof, and there's no point to it. And it they doesn't come back. You know, uh, do the the wine glass knock thing, right? And then that's it. That's all you see. Just yeah, it's really you don't dumb. Even see the it's it's a re- from the back. It's a reference for references' sake, really. Let's be honest. I guess. Um. So there's that, and then the, another part that I didn't get is that we have this entire thing about Ruby not being able to use our semblance in the Justice League universe, but then she can. Well, it, they have us. It's not really an entire thing. It's just a small thing of like, oh, we don't actually have our aura or our semblances here. I can't feel my aura. And then they realize, but oh, then we, she does. But they even make an offhand comment. It's like, well, you guys have powers. And they make an offhand. Like, yeah, you should talk to Batman about that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which I thought was but, a little uh, cheeky and fun. I get, like, I got to uh, chuckle you know, out them, of that. Them say, you know, the joke about you should talk to Batman. That, that's funny. That's cute. What I mean, though, is if you're going to have Ruby just have her, uh, you know, have her aura here's... and everything, the, is, why well, she didn't, just... But she didn't have why... her aura, but here's my thing about it, and here's where I'm going to kind of, yeah. like, part one, the Justice League took some time to figure shit out, right? Here, Ruby just kind of, like, knows. Even Superman's like, yeah. huh, how do you do that? And she's like, I just kind of felt it. And I'm like... Because th- she doesn't yeah. feel like an earlier scene. Like, there's a scene where they introduce her and it's like, oh, I guess I don't have my semblance here. And then the next scene where she needs to save Superman's like, oh, oh I-, I guess she does. Again, have it. it's, it's not like, her semblance. They fo- it's not her semblance. It's just but, she but, has but, a but power. What I'm saying, though, is, yeah, but know, what I'm saying, though, is, is like, a, you know, but if it's taken away from her, but only to be given back in another way, then why introduce it? Like, did they forgot to delete the line in the uh, in the next draft, and it was just there? It, well, uh, it feel- again, I think you're being a little bit nitpicky on this one because again, it's it's not Maybe. her semblance; it's just a completely different power. I agree with oh. you in the she got it too quickly because the Justice League but, worked for it a little bit in part one, time. and they just kind of figured out the Ruby characters just kind of figured out much more quickly here. I get that, you know, point. At the same time, though, again, this is a shorter movie, and they're not going to spend a bunch of time doing something like that. But I also think because, as opposed to the other ones, Ruby's, you know, power is the one that's most like her original power, her original semblance. Which is fair. It is. Yeah. So so I guess this is probably the point where I'm, like, raising a bit of an eyebrow, because the others at least get something that's a bit new. Like, uh, Yang has flamethrowers, and, you know... We don't see anything from Weiss, actually. Weiss gets nothing. I'm pretty yeah, sure. Yeah, like she gets Mister, she gets Mister Freeze's ice gun, and then it's like, oh, I guess it needs to be charged because it wasn't used for a while. Yeah, like Weiss doesn't. I, Weiss is the only one who doesn't <laughs> show a power in this actually, until we get yeah. to the very end where they just do the uh, digital world thing again, and they all have their semblances and their aura back and everything. So it didn't yeah. last that long. But you get like a few scenes of Yang apparently being able to use ray guns from her fists? Question mark. Uh, and... I, basically, she has flamethrowers. Basically, I guess that's what it is. I'm She's not really. A firebender. I guess. <laughs> and then you have Blake doing stuff with Shadow. Yeah, I don't know what the fuck I... was going on. 
I don't know that, but at least you know, at least Blake got to do something. I feel I like we needed that. we needed time to like just test the powers right, just to see them more. Awesome. Like, hey, what is this? For the record, this is just me joking, all right? No, no, but fair, fair. When I say, but I do but, agree. Like, I think we needed more time with it, right? Like, they needed I, to spend just like a few extra minutes having a, a scene or two where it's just them testing shit out and learning things. Yeah. Because they have this scene, you know, when Ruby is practicing with Superman, and it's like, that would have been a good point to do that. Which, kind of skipping around a bit, speaking of that scene, I thought that was nice, you know, seeing Superman oh, that was nice. bond with Ruby a little bit and be like, hey, you know, you seem to be having some issues, let's talk about that. Because I think we also mentioned this in part one, where... You know, because when you really get down to it, Ruby and Superman are kind of in a similar position of being the team leaders, mm -hmm. but at the same time, they're also like, you know, the, for lack of a better term, the Boy Scouts. They are the happy-go-lucky ones. They, you, don't, you don't necessarily look at them and see me there when it comes to personality. Mm -hmm. But they carry on this mentality and despite, despite like their cocky nature and they make it work. So I think there's a really good connection there, especially because Ruby, while she has powers and her, and her weapons and stuff, she's kind of a regular kid and Superman is fucking Superman. I don't think I need to tell you that uh, in terms of powers, there's a bit of imbalance here, but it's nice. I like that. There's a time for letting these characters breathe and talk, and I also think, and again, why you send Batman? That's kind of a cool combo, pun not intended, I swear. Um, I think, I think Yang is with Flash. Yeah, and... Yang has. I thought a really, I thought it was really cool to see. You know, I thought it was really interesting to see one of the Ruby characters giving one of the DC characters, even though they're an adult, like a little bit of a, hey, I know what you're going through. You know, and I can kind of help you through that, right? I thought that was really interesting. I thought that was a good moment for Yang and Flash, right? Because Flash is having basically like PTSD sort of from Kilgore, basically like, um, what's the word? Uh, fucking. I don't recall actually. Like, I've seen uh, that's another thing. Nothing with the movie really stuck with me afterwards. I, I'm trying to remember stuff and I only not... seen it two hours ago. Possessed, that's the word I'm looking for. Kilgore possessed him from the first film, right? Because Kilgore was yeah. being the Flash the entire time. And so the mm -hmm. Flash remembers that, and, you know, that's kind of stuck with him. He's kind of having, like, issues with that. And Yang's like, hey, I get it. I know what you're going through, kind of. So let me help, because I've been through some shit, too, right? So I thought that was neat. I thought that was really good. The thing that... What does what does Blake get though? I don't not call no one really. One... Blake's just kind of yeah. there, mm -hmm. unfortunately. But the but the joke that I was about to go to, uh, imagine if you are going into this uh, strictly for the Justice League and you don't know Ruby. Would you get that Blake and Yang are supposed to be a thing? Because in the final picture they take together, you see the two of them kissing. I completely missed that. Actually, I'll admit. It's, I did not notice happening. that. I did not notice the that. They're in the background of the final picture they take. You can see the both of them kissing, and I'm like, oh, that's a nice reference, but also, that's did not the other sign notice. that it can't be before Volume 9, because it took them nine fucking seasons to get to that point, even though it was obvious. But, <laughs> but it's also like, wait, if you are just going into this as someone who doesn't know Ruby, would you get from their interaction that they're supposed to be a thing? I think there's, like, one moment where you see Yang do a thing of, like, maybe you could see these two characters having a thing. Because it's, like, Yang does an animation thing. I forget what it was. But there's one moment, and then that's it. So, otherwise, other than that, that maybe gives you an inkling of, huh, maybe those two are a thing. No. Hmm, this... Oh, the... Hmm, this do look cute. I'm gonna watch the show now. It takes them nine seasons. <laughs> That's Listen. just me being an asshole, though. So You bring this up, right? And this actually mm. is a good segue into something I want to talk about. We get yeah. something I have been asking for and talking about yes. Ruby for a long, long, long time. Like, ever since I want to say Volume 4 or 5. And I would still argue it was a thing before then, too. And that is someone calling Ruby out for her bullshit, which is 
she's got a fucking death wish and she is consistently and continually put herself in the most danger because she doesn't want to lose anyone else, right? And we mm -hmm. finally have it in this damn movie where... Which is not canon. <laughs> where Yang says, yo, sis, what the fuck? And... And it's also... I want... Really... No, I want to like it, but I don't. And the reason I mm -hmm. think I don't is because Ruby just kind of walks away consequence free from all that. Like, she's like, I'm not mom. I'm not Raven. So it's okay. It's like, well, no, it's not. Just because you yeah. say, I'm not going to, I'm not going anywhere yet. I'm still coming back. It's like, but you're still doing the bullshit. So it's like, that's still not, you're, you're not acknowledging that you've done wrong, that you're doing this, that there is a problem. I'm sorry, you're not. It just, it doesn't fix anything. And I know, and I'm fairly certain now, right, that because of Volume 9, we're not going to get shit on this discussion in any more of Ruby, if we get any more of Ruby at all. Because they're probably going to look at Volume 9, it's like, eh, we've solved that for Ruby now. But you didn't, because the other characters never got to it's... talk to Ruby. Because I, I stand, that... I will continue to stand firm. I will continue to stand firm. I will die on this hill. Yang, especially Yang, but Yang, Blake, Weiss, but especially Yang, have every right to say, hey, Ruby, what the fuck? You committed suicide in front of us. Whether it mattered or not, doesn't fucking matter. You did this right in front of us. You looked us in the eyes as you did it. What the fuck? We deserve to have a discussion about that, I think. My person being, maybe I'm wrong, right? Maybe no, I'm wrong for assuming... You. If someone commits suicide in front of you and you're really close to them, that like you shouldn't be allowed to talk to them about it if they survive the attempt. Maybe I'm wrong, but I think you should. No, I don't I... know. And from what I from what I've seen, the fandom's like, no, 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 we don't need that. I'm like, yes, we fucking do. We don't need that. That's a, that's a legit. I I agree with you for the record. And if anything, a problem I have with this is that they introduce that, but they never really do anything with that. It's a conversation that goes completely unacknowledged. It's just, this is a problem Ruby has. Ruby does really great with some moments. And then there's these moments where it's like, man, you have something here. You can do something here. And they just never do. And I don't know if it's like they're just waiting for what they feel is that just right time. And I didn't expect anything major from this movie, I'll admit. But then I get this and I'm like... I walk away more disappointed because nothing was done with it. It's like, man, I finally get the thing that I want. And it's in this fucking movie that doesn't fucking matter. And on top of that, they still don't do enough with it. And it's just, ugh, ugh. I'm disappointed and sad because I finally get the thing that I've been wanting for so long and talking about for so long because Ruby's character fucking needs this shit. And like an intervention needs to happen with this girl because fuck, and, but. And that's why I keep saying to you that having so many goddamn characters take away from the main four. Shush you. We need more characters. <laughs> no, we don't. <laughs> no, we fucking don't. We have enough. <laughs> but yeah, unfortunately for you, we're going to vacuum where all the characters are. So, uh, well, what the fuck are they going to do in volume talk, 10? Let's talk about that when we get to volume 10. This is if not a ever. problem for him. Who knows? Is this like a thing now that it, we might not get a volume 10? They have said nothing other than like, we might have an idea for you to get volume 10. And then it's just been radio silence for over a year now, basically. So we have no clue. And like, there is even a thing of like, hey, guys. You got to show that you have interest in this. So, like, you know, get the hashtag training of Greenlight Volume 10. So, like, no work has been done on Volume 10 whatsoever. Nothing. No writing, no animation, nothing. They have nothing for Volume 10. So, yeah, looking like we might not get anything. At least not for a while longer yet. At the very then, least. Um, so, I... All I'm gonna say is, may you never know the pain that's like Cooper fans are feeling. <laughs> Cliffhanger for 11 years, I'm still bitter. <laughs> but, alright. I mean, at least for okay. Ruby, like, we got a, a good volume to end on, I suppose, but... But it still ends on a fucking cliffhanger. Yeah. I, I'm okay with that, I guess. 
I'll live. I'm used to it. Mm -hmm. Well, back to the movie here. I'm trying to think if there's anything to else to talk about because I'm trying to... Like, here's the thing. This movie... Not I have... necessarily is a good or bad thing. This movie doesn't really have much of a plot. There's mostly action sequences, which is not a bad... The action sequences are fun. They're well animated. Well, I think They're cool. something to note, right? This is supposed... Mm -hmm. like, I think... I feel like you're supposed to see this as one full movie, not two separate movies, right? I guess. If this was one full movie, we'll it. admit, I think my opinion of this would be worse because it would be too long. I'm gonna be honest. Oh. Mm -hmm. Because it's like 83 minutes for part one, 75 minutes for part two. That's over two hours. That's a bit long, and it just doesn't feel... If you think about these as one whole movie it doesn't feel very coherent like i think it was smart to break these up into two different parts that way it would feel a little bit more coherent if you don't think about them together right but the second you start thinking about them together it loses some of its coherency and it doesn't make as much sense and then it doesn't flow as well either we'll admit in two separate parts it feels more coherent even though it's not and it flows better even though it kind of doesn't it's weird, like um, it's like you said. It's it's like because as to if we are supposed to look at this as one big movie, then I guess then in terms of pacing, like you can tell where part one would stop and part two would begin, mm -hmm. which is kind of taken away. But I guess in as a full picture, it might work a bit better. But also, I can't really tell you. It's weird. Uh, like, I guess it can. Be, I guess it on the because I'll tell you what the stuff I talked about in the beginning. How there's no coherence, you know, between the voice actors of the Justice League, or you know, the outside and stuff. If you're watching this as one big movie, then this problem becomes a lot more. Uh, it becomes a lot more apparent. Again, I said before, right? Like, I can kind of forgive that if they were going for like we want them to sound younger and then we want them to sound older because. All the voice actors for part one are younger than the voice actors for the Justice League, anyways, for the voice actors for part two, right? Yeah, like, but as far as I'm aware, then, yeah. all of the voice actors for part one are like early 20s, whereas, you know, Travis, Laura, Troy Baker, they're all in their 40s and getting close to 50. <laughs> like, they're old. And then, uh, but at the not. same time, voice acting and voice acting, you can change your voice if you're talented enough, and all of them are. Yeah, very... but. Once you get past a certain age, you're not you're gonna find it hard to sound young again. <clears throat> my opinion. Rob Paulson would disagree, but that's uh, but you know. I think that's it takes a though. really good talent to continue to sound really young, right? Once you get past a certain age, your voice does start to change more. I guess, but what I'm saying though is, imagine if you're watching because Paul Two is shorter, so imagine yes, that you are watching. An hour and a half of these teenage just uh, of mm, teenage Justice League members, and then for the and then for the last hour and uh, hour and how long you suddenly watch them as you know them without any context because oh we're back home we are this now, huh? It's not a coherent story. I mean, this is one of those things of it doesn't bother me. I, I feel like this is a nitpick, right? Like I'm, I, I can... I'm sorry, I don't. If I mean, a movie is not coherent, if a movie is not coherent, then it's not a nitpick. It's a problem. And I know this is Ruby and Justice League, but I expect something from two franchises that people like. The VAs not being the same isn't something that I think is a problem personally for me, anyways. If it is for you, that's completely fair. I get it. But for me, like saying this movie's not coherent, I completely agree with you. There's some coherency issues with this movie. The voice actors changing isn't one of those issues for me personally. But I get uh, it. It's, uh, I just think to me, it's a matter of consistency within your own film. I get it. Again, but, I disagree, uh, but, but I, get, again, I do get is, it. This is one of those things that's not here nor there, though. No, no, it's... fair, fair. Uh, but... but also because the villain's scheme is kind of the same in both of them. Although now we have... What well, is the same this villain one, in both also, of them, there's too? Also, there's, also a, there's also a Ruby villain chimed yeah, in. Yeah, we which, have Arthur but, but, Watts I like back. how they just... Do you think it's Salem and we just cut to images of her? Like, 
Okay. Well, okay. Like, <laughs> is this, I, is like this is this is like you know something. I take it back. This is a very DC. This is a very DCEU thing of like you know this character, and then this character shows up, hello, and walks away. I I do have a question for you though, because they mentioned yeah. him, and this is someone who you've never fucking met before. So, <laughs> Doctor Merlot. Wait, this is the this is the guy they fight, right? No, who the fuck is? Arthur no. Watts is not Doctor Merlot. Okay, Arthur so Watts, wait, wait. you remember Watts, right, from Volume Seven and Eight? Yeah, so that's the thing. I thought that yes, I think that yeah, we did see him though. You're right. You're yeah, right. Arthur Watts is the main villain here with Kilgore as well. Dr. Merlot is a character from the Ruby video game. Oh, that's why you only get it. like, that's why you don't get an animated vision of him. It's just like a singular image and that's it. It's, he's just a random villain. He's like the villain of the Ruby video game that was made way back. Who's definitely not Canon. And it, it threw me for a fucking loop that they mentioned him here of all places. I, that was wild. Yeah, this, <laughs> now you tell now you tell me it's from the fucking video game. Really, I need to play the video games too. To what? Are the video are the video games fucking canon? Is Ruby um, the Kingdom Hearts of web shows? The first video game, no. The second one, also no, but is more canon than the first. But ah. I mean, again, Ruby's always done this thing of all of its stuff can technically fit. If you want to make it fit, it's but not super I, hard. But, but the thing is, I, I get it. But also, if I need to play a game, you know, that I, in this case, it's not necessary to understand Again. At, at what point. But if we are going to, if you're going to reference it, I guess maybe you're not. Cool for the you're not going to learn I, much about Doctor Merlot. He's literally he appears at the very end of the game, and that's it. Like you, you just you so don't know. So now I'm even you just know, it a bit more. Like, you just was know someone. Here's his thing. Just he experimented design? on. He experimented on the Grim. That's it. He's not connected to Salem. Uh, he has no connection to Salem whatsoever. He just experimented on the Grim, and that's literally it. That's, that's so. All he it's does. like, so it's like one of those. Oh, we just really like the design. Let's use it. I I guess I think they just like. Hmm. Let's pick another villain randomly so we can have like. Oh, maybe it's this guy, and that's it. And then they just went with Watts because they probably didn't have the budget to make a model for Doctor Merlot. Let's be honest. They probably weren't given that budget. I suppose. Oh, uh, so or they didn't I have, have the time. To say, I have to say, you surprised me this episode. I had no idea that I have to take into account the Ruby video games. I mean, Which, for the record, I'm sure are good and fun in their own way. As you know, I, The first unless... one is basically... Have you played Dynasty Warriors? Do you know what Dynasty Warriors I... is? I played Hyrule Warriors. Well, then you, you know the Dynasty... Yeah, that counts. You know Dynasty Warriors. You kind of know that formula. That's what yeah, the yeah. first game is. It's basically that with a little bit of, like, I want to say Left 4 Dead, essentially. Ah, uh, interesting. And it's okay for a bit. It's nothing really great. Like, it is very meh game. Fine, but that's it. The second one is, like, I forget the name of it. It's Ruby Aerofell, I think it is. That one is bit more competently made since it's made by i believe i want to say is it the way forward one yes because it's way forward yes it's the way yeah. forward one yeah that's mm -hmm. the way forward one with like arc system works involved and stuff like that right so, so probably is it a metroidvania or something i think i don't remember everything about it i'll admit but it had because you know, they do a lot of those uh, like a way forward are known for the metroidvanians so I yeah i think it was a bit more metroidvania because it's got the side scroller stuff going on looking it up real quick yeah and it was a bit more like it was within volume 7 volume 8 and it had like little animated cutscenes going on and stuff as well that connected it more right it just it had more going on than the first game which was ruby i want to say ruby grim eclipse and then there's been like some crossover stuff that Ruby's done as well, but I'm not going into all, all right. that. But yeah, well, like those are the two main Ruby games: Ruby Grim Eclipse and Ruby Aerofell. There's a mobile game. Here's a question. That's been here's canceled. a question for you: Is the fact that we're basically we are barely talking about the movie just shows that the movie doesn't really have a lot of things to say about it? Again, I mean, I talked about the Ruby, you know, getting called out by Yang thing, the Yang and Flash scene, a little bit of the Ruby Man and Superman, Ruby Ruby Man. 
Ruby and Superman. Ruby man. <laughs> Shush. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, this will be a superhero that will be interesting. Uh, probably not. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, Ruby and Superman little scene, and like that's kind of it. Like it was nice to get to see Arthur Watts again. It was kind of cool, but at the same time, you know, he was way cooler in the fucking in Ruby Volume Eight when he fought Ironwood. That's that fight scene was amazing and phenomenal and you know we they kind of just underutilize him here like they underutilize a lot of things and it's kind of sad because i feel like personally there are things here that maybe go man there's something here but it just drops the ball hard on a lot of different things in my opinion mm -hmm. and that's kind of why it just comes across as just it's okay you're not you know wasting your time but it's just there, as we it's said. Just it's there. just kind of there. You like it, great. You don't, then yeah, nothing, fair. nothing, you know, nothing. You don't really miss anything. You don't really gain anything. It's just, it's there. If you like, if you just want to see the Justice League and Ruby characters do cool shit, you'll get what you're paying for, but it doesn't have anything else besides that. Pretty much. Agreed. So is there anything else to say on the matter? Oh. Because don't really, watch this movie I'm or don't. Uh, I, I, I mean, if they are here in the spoiler section, then they probably saw it. But I'm also just kind of here and I'm trying to so hard to think about stuff to say about this movie. And it's like, I said the action scenes are cool. All right. Mm -hmm. I talked about some of the problems I have with the, um, with the continuity and the world and stuff. Okay. There's nothing much else to say about it, sadly. It's it, it's a movie that exists. I'm trying to see something really quick. Where's the release date at? So until Wolf figures this out, I I I guess I'm just gonna shoot the wind and talk about random stuff. So <laughs> if there's no Ruby Volume <laughs> Ten, this is gonna be really really sad, honestly, and also ha uh, in a way that isn't isn't Ruby like the big thing that Rooster Teeth have unless I uh, besides the red and blue thing from Halo. But then again, that's not really an original franchise because it's from Halo. So it's yeah okay. It's kind of sad that this is the last Ruby thing we've gotten and we're going to get potentially. If this is what, if this is the last time we see the Ruby characters, then honestly, yeah. Because this came out October of last year and Volume 9 finished in April of last year. So Volume 9 came out yeah. first and then this came out. And then Ruby Ice Queendom was a year before that. Mm -hmm. really sucks oh, that this is so, the last Ruby thing we got. So, like, so honestly, I will say, because uh, from what you're telling me, there's no, there's no much continuation. To Currently, there's, plan. there's, yeah, there's nothing. As far as we're aware, they've not, there've been little things here or there that looks like maybe something, but it, it's, it's amounted because to mostly I nothing recall, so far. Because I recall them saying that Volume 10 is in development. Nope. So. It was never in development. It has not been. Like they've wow. been pretty clear about that. Like that's again, that's why they had. That's why they were. That's why the people, who, like the writers, like Carrie and, uh, um, I forget his name. I apologize, but Carrie, one of them at least, anyways, was like on Twitter, I believe, saying like, "Hey, you know, let's get the hashtag Greenlight Ruby Volume Ten trending because that shows that you know you guys are all interested in it and you really want to get this done, and that way it gives us more of a chance to get it done." And wow. People did that, and I don't know if it was enough or not, because they've not said much since then. Hopefully they're making it, but they've been very quiet, other than, like, a comment here or there of, like, you know, we have a way of maybe getting Ruby Volume 10 to you guys, and they've said nothing since then, since that little comment, and who knows if that was, like, an official thing or not. But, I mean... Yeah, I'm looking into stuff here, and, yeah, it does seem like... It, it does seem like there's nothing, which is... Honestly, sad. If this is the last Ruby thing that we're gonna get, it's then... worth noting. Rooster Teeth's been having trouble for a while. A lot of stuff has been going on with Rooster Teeth, yeah, and they've kind of been they're, they're they've been up and down. Stuff. They've been kind of floundering a little bit here lately, and they've 
canceled a lot of things, moved a lot of things around, like a lot of stuff's going on with them. So I do get it if Ruby kind of takes a back seat, but I think Ruby is one of their more popular things besides their podcast stuff and a few other specific things they have going on. Um, but also they're owned by Warner Brothers, and Warner Brothers has been very cancel happy here lately since they've got bought by Discovery, because apparently that was a decision. Last, almost a year ago, Geoff Yeder said that despite not getting a green light, they did have they did have a planning for it, and like they have an overview, they have an overview. They just kind of want to, they just kind of need to get to get ready. But yeah, they've not done anything since then, though, and they've not had the chance to do anything since then. Since yeah, everyone's I'm kind looking of... at stuff here, like honestly, the, like in a Ruby wiki, the status is not greenlit. Yep. Yeah. Okay. I see here what you mentioned about the tweet that uh, apparently. So you know something, I want to hope you know as someone who again is kind of a casual fan of Ruby and also wasn't really impressed with uh, Volume 7 and 8. Uh, but really liked Volume 9. Yeah, but I enjoyed Volume 9. And I think it is kind of sad that it just goes, that it went out with this. If it is really the final thing we're going to get out of it. Hopefully that it's not, does. but it might be the final thing for potentially a while at the very least, right? Which is a little mm -hmm. sad, but... yeah. Well, it is um, what it is, I think. I guess then you know what if I'm gonna try and be optimistic here, then I'll end I'll end my <laughs> notes on the matter with I hope that volume ten gets uh, gets a uh, green lit and we'll be here to talk about good Ruby stuff whenever they come. Because Ruby is good, you know. There's some good stuff within Ruby. Again, it yeah, wouldn't like have gotten I, as popular if it for didn't. All, right? For all my for all the criticisms I had with the show and how it handled some stuff and I I still enjoy the show. If I didn't, I wouldn't I would have told Wolf listen, keep me out of this shit. I don't wanna cover it. But I enjoy I enjoyed what I saw. I have more seasons of Ruby that I enjoyed rather than those that I didn't enjoy. I mean, it, so there again, right? Ruby got popular for a reason. And it, there's just something to it. It just has a charm where yes, it's absolutely imperfect. One hundred percent agree. I get it. But also, there's something to it that just makes it work, that makes it click so well for so, so many people. I there is just part a, something of it was about the it. love. I think because there was a lot of love and passion that was oh, absolutely put into it. And maybe, and I think the reason that people don't really like the, like the, the few later seasons is because this is where it became corporate, quote unquote. Maybe. But I, I still feel like, personally, you can still feel the love there. You can still feel that passion that's being put into it. Oh, definitely. I'm not saying that it's completely devoid of that. I'm just saying, but when when something starts as a passion project and then, you know, becomes a job, sometimes it can get in the way. And also, you know, losing the creator very early on. So, but for, but this could be it. This is a topic for a whole other time. True. So, yeah, what, like... what I will say, though, is... I really hope this is not the last time we see the Ruby characters because Fair. obviously we'll see the Justice League again in anything. And yeah. I'm not just talking about that Suicide Squad game about killing them. Which I mean, no one you know, likes. Like, I just hope that Ruby gets another shot. I don't want it to go out with such a win, though. Yeah, it would it'd definitely be nice to get more. It would definitely be nice to get something. I would love to see them take another shot at this. Maybe they can do it better in the future. We'll see, right? But I, I do want Ruby to get more, at the very least. It would be nice. I agree. I'm biased in this matter, I know, but yeah. Well, uh, so anything else to say on the matter? This was all for Justice League X Ruby, Superheroes and Husband Part 2. We definitely talked about this one a lot, so maybe that's a, a good or a bad selling point. You let us know in the comments below. <laughs> Okay, now continue the rest of the outro. <clears throat> that was all for us here at The Outcast. I have been Wolf, your host, and I was joined by... HC. And you can find us at BurtCast, capital B, capital C, on Twitter, and you can find us at BurtCast Team on Tumblr.com. And with all of that said, thank you for watching. That's been us here. And we'll see you all next time. Take care. Bye-bye.